Okay, let's get everything up and going here. And we'll get people to load on. On Monday, we forgot to send out the thing that says, hey, we're going live at 10 o'clock. And so the numbers were down a little bit, and then John realized what had happened, so he put it out, uh, out there when we were about halfway through. If you missed Monday, I would really go back and watch it. It is about the skeleton quilt, the AIDS quilt with Jonathan. And I, I think, you know, Nancy Bavore at the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum really gave us insight to the controversy behind that quilt. And I think it's I think it's a very 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 important quilt when it comes to quilt history in um, in the world. I was going to say in the United States, but no, really in the world, right? So in that piece that we did on Monday, Nancy said that Jonathan. There were three people who won two spots in the hundred best quilts of the century. And Jonathan's was the skeleton quilt and it was the airplane quilt. All right. So then I asked Nancy, well, who were the other people that got it? And I'm going to share with you. I wish I had shared it Monday, but somehow it got messed up in the scheme of things. Let me get on. I want to see comments here. So um, first person, I had never heard of this person is Piney S. Feller. Now, I know that quilt behind Piney, and I believe she is uh, the elder in the picture. And apparently, she had an absolutely no sound. Um, John, can you hear the sound? Sandra, if you don't have sound, it's on your end. So go make sure your sound is turned on, okay? That always makes me a little bit nervous. Anyways, apparently she was a hoot, very, very funny, etc. So she got two quilts in that uh, the top 100 quilts of the of the century. Okay, good, Sandra. All right, um, and then the other. Oh, I'm trying to think. I don't know the names of the quilts particularly, but the other one. Okay, think. Who is one of our contemporaries that knocked it out of the ballpark starting in the 70s? Oh, Michael James. <laughs> so actually, he is one of our legends, and it's certainly worth to go watch that. He was pivotal in, I think, starting the art movement and stepping out of the box with tradition as we know it. So, okay, then I... I, I don't know what happened Monday. Man, I'm a slacker. I am a slacker. Um, Sherry, am I in the tornado area? I'm in California. I don't think so. I, do I need to turn on the news or something? I don't know. Anyways, the skeleton quilt uh, um, got to see the back, and it has four giant AIDS ribbons. So let's take a look at that. So that was held back. And you can you can see. So yes, while it was about Day of the Dead, it certainly had a huge message about AIDS. And also the reason he, just to recap, the reason he had two, what is going on here? Oh, two skeletons on, on the front is because one was representing his friends with AIDS and then the other person was represented uh, by somebody with cancer that he knew and loved that passed. Okay, then I showed you that we are getting holiday lights Christmas pattern together. It's coming together. I have one last person, Catherine, who's going to really spell, 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 check it, copy edit it, tech edit it, etc. As soon as I look at a pattern, my eyes start going like this. I go, you know, all the numbers. I'm the type of gal that makes a block, puts it on the wall, makes another block, puts it on the wall, and goes from there. So I'm glad I've got these people in my life that can cover my rear end because, um, like when Ricky and I had the magazine, we would go through and proof it page by page. And pri primarily, what I was concerned about was how it looked graphically. So, so thank goodness that we are all born with different skills. So then Rachel sent me this picture, and it was from um, right here, right here. 
and that's what we're going to be doing only mine has the um, lights on the outside rather than those quarter square triangles however I think that is great and I mean this quilt again as I said on Monday has stood the test of time Rondi can you even tell me when Margaret Peters book was first published I almost texted you before this and then I got distracted because that's how long this quilt has been around and I've done three versions of it and it just keeps a gift that keeps on giving all right all right so Jamie 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 I put this up on Monday because I caught it on Facebook and my and my breath was taken away I was completely incorrect about the size of it it's like 30 by 60 and I even said I even said it's not like it's 30 by 60 it's smaller than that I don't don't ever take for sure what comes out of my mouth because you know how that is okay Rhonda you think it was the mid 80s okay yeah that's a long time for a pattern to stay relevant okay but anyways back to this Jamie got hold of me because I said I said it's you know like 20 by 30 or something wrong it's like 30 by 60 and um and I said well the front the face is appliqued and she wrote she said no the whole thing is pieced so I blew up the face look at that everybody so now I'm going who is this person who is this person so I could of course I lost the email that we were corresponding with of course that's me and so I went to Facebook and I typed in Jamie and up came up came her page and all of a sudden I'm like going who is this person now the crazy thing is that Jamie if you look at friends on Facebook we all have um, um, we all have different what I, I just got sidetracked in Bonnie I'm gonna come back to you um, she, she had for her uh, picture her headshot was her quilt and so then I knew I found her and then I so then I went to her website and I started looking and my heart started skipping a beat now here's the thing you need to know Jamie is not a one horse pony at all it was, it was like one show one horse pony one pony she does a ton of things including designing absolutely delicious panels and a lot of the people she's worked with I've worked with so then here's another one and I'm sitting there going we got to get her on the show okay <laughs> I mean this is spectacular so then I go back to her Facebook place and she's being officially stalked and here is what she's working on now so I reached out Jamie Calverstren Calverstren I reached out to her and I queried would she be interested in being on the quilt show and the answer was yes but the stars have to align so I when when I see some, Jamie I'm talking to you when I see work like yours the first thing I think is I want to take a class from you and and if I want to take a class from you I can guarantee you our audience is going to want to take a class from you I think your work is absolutely breathtaking okay so here we go we're gonna go now to back to Michael James this is the conclusion of everything and as I said in I think the first or the second episode this is the fourth and third installment yeah uh, we're gonna <clears throat> crunch it all together and make it available as one set on um, YouTube okay and I would I would pass it around everybody just pass it around because if we don't understand where we've come from that's a sad commentary on the craft today so here we go whoops what am I doing okay before I hit it what I want to say is that Jonathan Shan well <clears throat> let me just have you get the story all right he did collect other people's quilts but I'm gonna I'm gonna slaughter it so let's just get to it in the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles with Nancy Bevore we have just done a couple episodes on Jonathan Shannon 
But what you have to know is he was a collector of other people's quilts, and we have this here too. So Nancy, can you tell us what you know? Yes, so um, Jonathan collected quilts by makers he studied with, mm -hmm. and one of them is Francoise Barnes, who made this quilt. Uh, Francoise was one of the founders of Quilt National and um, also was inspired by African masks in a lot of her work. Okay. And uh, this is one of her very typical styles. Uh, Jonathan also, as I said, studied with her and I, we, I think we have an image of the quilt that he made in her class, which is quite different from this. But he also collected, he just wanted to support quilt artists and he said he could afford to. So he collected not only quilts by artists he studied with, but works he just liked. Well, on top of that too, he's taking classes. Yes, he Never is. stopped taking classes. Never stopped taking. Well, he did the first few years as he was teaching himself how to make quilts um, and discover his own voice, he did. But then a few years into his quilt making career, he started teaching classes. Well, there you go, it all goes around, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. well this one, they're gonna take a look at next. It really kind of just, ooh, I love yes, this piece. Yes, Let's take fabulous. a look. Okay. Talk about a quilt that you know has stood the test of time. This is beautiful and it was made, what, in 1993? 1993, it's really incredible. Um, this is uh, by a Russian-born artist, Ludmila Uspinskaya, mm -hmm. and actually Jonathan saw this at the National Patchwork um, Quilt Festival in, in England, and uh, gotcha. that's where he saw it. But what is amazing to me, as Jonathan could use fabric to tell a story, uh, to create a mood, to... Um, express what he wanted to express. Um, Lumilla does the same thing. Each of these blocks is created separately and she uses a variety of fabrics, some sparkle fabrics, um, a lot of home decoration fabrics, and probably what was available to her in right, Europe at the time. Right. And even though it's totally abstract, it does really have this landscape quality. It's I get a little cold when I look at it, actually. Yeah, it's like yeah. Iceland or someplace in the Arctic, very cold, but very dramatic. It is beautiful. It's really astounding. Yeah. Yes. Nancy, this is a very interesting quilt. Tell us about it. Yes, this is by the artist Anna Maria Brenti, and she's Italian. Okay. But for a few years, she lived in Berkeley, and I think that's maybe where she and Jonathan crossed paths. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's called In the Garden, and she was inspired by a Japanese garden, which isn't what we think of gardens with plants and trees and green things, but it's really about the rocks and the serenity of how the sand and rocks are raked. Um, but again, as I started looking at this, not only is the imagery just beautiful and inspiring, but her technical skill is just a real I, tour de force. My eye just caught this. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? Yes, like a single thread. Um, yeah. And so I think Jonathan was probably really impressed with not only her technical skill that matched his, but also her sense of design and um, creativity in doing this. And look at this. I'm, I spy right here, everybody. Look oh. at that binding. It's yeah, she also incorporates a lot of, of silks, um, unusual fabrics. Again, as Jonathan did, to create a mood, uh, to add to what the message that she was trying to send. Beautiful.
This is by uh, the artist Ruth Reynolds, also known as Riva. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, Jonathan commissioned her to make a quilt for him. And this is a story quilt. Um, and the man in the center says, I don't know how to tell you all other than that I'm gay. So it's a man coming out to his family and their various responses. And it's got blue jean fabric in it, uh, lame, beading, beading, beading. But what Riva, the artist, said to Jonathan is like, I am so glad that you commissioned me to make this quilt because it gave me permission to make a quilt about something I wanted to talk about for a long time. So this was one of those synergistic relationships that artists can have right. and um, right. support each other in all sorts of ways. I, this is just incredibly fun, and there's a whole lot more being said there, too. Yes, there is. I love the <laughs> LeMay leopard print. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, incorporating whatever fabric she needed to tell the story. <clears throat> well, talk about out of character of what he purchased. <laughs> What's the story behind this? This is Monster Truck by Laura Lee Fritz. <laughs> and evidently, uh, according to Laura, who was here, I was very happy to have her here for the reception for this exhibition. Um, he saw this in Paducah and said, Laura, I have to have that quilt. It is so outrageous. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's such an American culture phenomenon with these car crushing trucks and just to give you a sense your viewers a sense of the scale when you look at the quilt here's the man behind <laughs> it and these tires are enormous and um she actually told the story that she posted this quilt on her facebook page and the man who designed the truck got in touch with her and said i designed that truck so this is based on a photograph that she had taken at uh, one of the car crushing events I want to take a look at one more, and it's Therese Mays. Okay, okay let's do. Okay. Well, Therese May is a local here, right? Yes, she is. And her work is so whimsical and fun and crazy. She's wonderful. She's about that tall, too, right? She is. She yeah. is. She is. But don't let that fool you. Yeah. She's a powerful artist. <laughs> right. um, but this is a work from 1988. Um, so it's one of the earliest mm -hmm. works in, in Jonathan's collection that he purchased. But it's very typical of her work with this uh, kind of chain log cabin piecing that she does, her fantasy animals. Um, and she works in squares, as you can see from the quilt here. But then also she adds accents by painting. And she says about quilt making, she did piecing early on. And then she said, well, what are quilts but fabric? And what do you paint on but fabric? So why can't I paint on quilts? And she really started making that acceptable. And she also lets her threads hang. Um, which, it's you know, not quilted. It was, was scandalous. It was scandalous <laughs> yeah. at the time. And it's, you know, it's part of the texture. But um, no, I love this one, a teacup. And uh, again, it's very typical of her style. I'd say whimsical beyond, yes. beyond measure. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you so much again for opening your doors, and this is just an extraordinary exhibit. You're very welcome. I feel blessed to be here. I feel lucky to have been the guest curator for this, and Yay. it was just really wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for coming. And I hope you've all enjoyed this as much as we certainly have. Thanks for watching. I love these three shows. And I want to say, <clears throat> a couple of you have come on and gone, oh, I'm late to the party, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can go back and watch the, watch the whole thing. And I would say it's certainly worth your time to go do that. Susan, I will be at Houston for market. I might stay uh, a day or two just to walk the show and stuff. But um, I used to do market and festival is, is too much. I, I, I I can't do that anymore. And so I'm there um, on the ticket of R&K or Quilters Select. So I asked Cliff, who owns the company, would he rather have me at market? Would he rather have me at festival? 
That said, I am going to be at Paducah this year, which is right around the corner. And I will be in this Quilter Select booth um, Wednesday, Thursday, half a Friday. I would love to meet you if you're there. I would love to meet you. Okay. So on Monday, while we were at the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum, and by the way, thank you again, Nancy, before you just, you rock it, man. Um, there was a side room that had Yvonne Porcella stuff, some of her pieces, and it was more about her garments. And we've all concentrated on, we've concentrated at TQS more about her outrageous quilts and this and that. One of her kimonos was there that I had never seen. And I remember when she started making those kimonos, they were like, I'm, I'm making up 10 feet tall. Okay. They were obviously not for wearing. And this particular, when they first came out, they were very much the red, the black check, black and white checker and all that. And, and this one was out of silk, silk, very soft, very, very soft. So Nancy had a lunch date, but she said, I'll stay. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. So we have another piece. I'm going to show you. This is when, you know, Yvonne was one of our legends. She started Sakwa. And if you've never watched our legend show with her, it's Yvonne Porcella. All right. And you can just put it in our search bar at thequiltshow.com. She at that point was battling cancer. And in the end, cancer won is a very important document that we had the honor to put together. When we were there, she had these little pieces. Oh, I wanted one so badly. To me, this is so Yvonne, it's ridiculous. All right. So um, I bought it and it's always up in my studio. So Yvonne is always with me, man. She was something else, something else. And if you don't know about her, you need to get educated, just like Jonathan Shannon. What's interesting here is that we've got people like Rondi, who've been around the pool hall as long as myself, which is, you know, up 40 years. And then we have new people. And what has happened since the 70s to the quilting world is incredible, absolutely incredible. It was the Renaissance in the 70s and 80s. And, you know, yet things keep changing and turning. And, and that's one of the reasons I love uh, thequiltshow.com is because we endeavor to bring you new stuff as well as staying true to the tradition of quilting, okay? So if you're not a member, go to thequiltshow.com and become a member. It's 49 bucks a year and you have access to everything. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions here. I do not think so. All right, so I will see you Monday with my Yvonne piece and then um, I'll be heading off to Houston. And when we come back, we'll get going on that gnome quilt. Also, you need to know that while Ricky is in Paducah, because he's there for an extended period of time because he's part of the whole judging scene, he's going to get some really cute, cool interviews, like one with the first quilter who quilt, quilted in space. Other quilters have gone up. Jam. Jam was a quilter that went up. But we're talking quilted in space. All right. Have a... Wonderful, wonderful time the next next week. And Jamie, my heart is full too, okay? I think we are good. I think we are good. All right, people. I will see you Monday. Be safe, be smart, be creative. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Bye-bye.